Okay. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Silicon Beach Pitch Night for April. Um, in the spirit of reconciliation and on behalf of the Silicon Beach community, I acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land that I'm standing on here today, which is the Bunyurong Bunwurong and the Wurundjeri Woiwurrung peoples of the Eastern Kulin Nation. And I pay respect to their elders, past, present and emerging, and extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people who are joining us here today. So I'd like to actually begin by just stating what the primary mission of Silicon Beach Group is, and it's to empower founders. So as such, our vision is to create an environment where founders can feel supported, educated and empowered to fulfill their startup vision and values. So really tonight it's about providing a platform for founders and startup owners to feel comfortable, open, connected with each other, and most of all, just really supported on that journey. We do have some people that turn up and have never pitched before. So we really want this to be the environment that you can practice and experiment and put your ideas out there um, and be in a really wonderful environment. So a little bit of housekeeping. We are recording the pitch night, as you may be aware. Um, please mute um, so that there are no extra noises um, unless you are speaking. And we really encourage you to use the chat amongst yourselves. So please provide lots of feedback and encouragement to the pitchers. You can ask questions. And our wonderful timekeeper, Brian, will also be popping in the details of each picture as well. Um, so that's great. So if you want to connect with them and find out more about their startup ID, you can do that as well. Um, I've noticed I haven't even introduced myself. So my name is Karen Finch, as you can probably see from the screen. I organise one of some of the events here at Silicon Beach, primarily in the space of the legal and business information events every month. And I also have the great honour and privilege of emceeing these virtual pitch nights, which is always my absolute favourite night of the year. So uh, night of the year, night of the month. Um, David, I'm going to hand over to you and stop talking. Um, and would you like to um, say a few words about our sponsors? Yes, of course. Thank you so much, Karen, for the introduction and uh, welcome everyone from my side as well. Uh, my name is David. Uh, I'm the lead organizer of Silicon Beach um, and uh, Silicon Beach is a community where we bring like minded people um, together to share their ideas and their dreams. And it's all on a volunteer base and we couldn't do what we're doing without the awesome contributions of volunteers like Karen herself, Brian working on the back end uh, and all the others. And uh, just want to introduce some of them. We have uh, community partners, KJ is on the call right now from um, Awake by 5 a.m. We have co-roster, John Webster. We have Go Weibel uh, from uh, from Robert, Legally Yours, Karen's Company, Think Innovation, my own. Um, without all those contributions, nothing of all of that would be possible. But this event and the, the, the value of this event wouldn't be possible either without having uh, prizes uh, from our judges, which are today from Johan from Business Authorities. And Johan, please feel free to unmute yourself and tell us what awesome prize you brought uh, for our for our winners. Awesome. So yeah, happy to do a strategy session, a workshop around taking your business. Mama. to <laughs> My daughter wants to wants to pitch in there. There you go, baby. Um, yeah, go to market strategy. We can help you. Hey, you know what? You've seen it on TV, have you? <laughs> um, help you build, grow, and scale the company into whatever you desire. Awesome, Johan. And we have also Lynn with us, uh, Lynn from Ideaspice. Lynn, would you like to tell us what price you brought uh, for our winners? Yes, thank you, David. Uh, we're offering a bespoke post on Ideaspice and Ideaspice is sharing ideas that do good. And so we're hoping that we can share one of the, at least one of the ideas today as a prize. Uh, you'll see on uh, the bespoke uh, icon on Ideas Buys that uh, we reach over 100,000 people per month and uh, be very happy to carry your idea. That's amazing. Over 100,000 already. That's a great achievement, Lynn. <laughs> and then there is one more prize. And today it is a prize from me from Think Innovation. And it is a, a spot in the Thinkubator, a new startup pre accelerator program, startup and small business pre accelerator program to help all of you that do have an idea uh, how to evolve that idea and uh, verify, validate your, your market and customer fit for, for uh, your startup idea. 
Um, so that's my prize for today. And if you want to know more about the program, just hit me up in the chat or follow me on LinkedIn. And I hand back to Karen. Hi, thank you so much, David. Um, so now on to tonight's proceedings. So for those of you, this is your first Silicon Beach virtual pitch night. Each pitcher, pitcher actually has 90 seconds to pitch. That's right, nine zero, 90 seconds. Um, so Brian will actually sound a bell to let you know for the pitchers when they've hit the 90 second mark. And that's really your opportunity to start winding up your pitch. Um, you will get the chance to add other things in after when the judges um, ask you some questions and different things. So after each pitch, our judges will unmute and they'll have five minutes to ask questions and provide feedback to our pitchers. And again, Brian will be timekeeping for that. So we'll listen out for the bell. So over to our judges tonight. So we have Johan, who is the CEO and founder of Business Authorities. Um, Johan has spent his entire career solving problems and fixing businesses. He discovered the power of systemization and leverage in his early 20s, where he built his first e-commerce business. This knowledge allowed him to grow not only his business, but his clients as well. And one of his latest business has reached a valuation of eight figures in two and a half years. That's super impressive. Johan has significant, significantly increased the bottom line of over 1,000 clients in more than 40 industries worldwide, and he does this with a focus on technology and utilising the systems he has built over the last two decades. So thank you so much for joining us, Johan. We're really excited to have you on the panel tonight. Our next judge is Lynn Wood, who, as we, as Lynn mentioned, is the chief ID spy at ID Spies. So Lynn co-founded ID Spies, which is that global ID sharing platform in 2016. Its purpose is sharing the innovation to inspire action, and it now features over 3,000 positive ideas and innovations explained simply in 100 words or less. Lynn's interest in innovation started early in her career and Lynn has served on many boards, boards, including as chair. Notably, Lynn was one of the first three women in Australia to be on the board of a listed organisation and one of the first to adopt a portfolio career as a consultant, board member, mentor and entrepreneur. We're so excited to have you, Lynn. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. And our final judge, last but not least, we have David Hauser, who this is your first time, I think, being on the pitching panel um, at this event. So that's very exciting. So as you, most of you would know, David Hauser is the lead of Silicon Beach and he's also the founder of Think Innovation. David has a degree in engineering and mechanical design and David spent over 10 years in the machine tool industry where he served in roles as lead engineer and project manager and the design of complex manufacturing machines for the automotive, aerospace and medical industries. Thinking outside of the box to solve wicked problems was always a passion of David's. The experience that he gained in the creation and implementation of innovative ideas motivated him to start Think Innovation and most recently the Think You Beta Startup and Business Pre-Accelerator. So thank you so much, David, for being on the panel. <laughs> This is exciting. We're mixing it up today. I like it. You, you okay. can see my face. <laughs> we are. I think that's wonderful. Now, we have had quite a few pictures registered tonight, but um, I think some weren't on quite on the call. So I'm going to go slightly out of order um, to what we originally had, Brian. So um, look out. We're going to be flying by the seat of our pants tonight, I think. Um, so... Nikhil Data from Managed Analytics AI, you are the first up. I need you to unmute and just let Brian know when you're ready and we will start your 90 seconds. Good luck. Great. <clears throat> Thanks, Karen. Thanks very much for the introduction. Um, um, as you said, my name is Nikhil Data, but I don't expect everyone to pronounce that right. Uh, and I'm the founder of a, of a startup called Managed Analytics. Uh, yeah, I'm ready to go whenever you want to start. We're good to go, great. So we're a managed services platform that provides businesses with analytics and decision support capabilities to improve productivity, workforce effectiveness and capital allocation without the need for specialist teams or capital outlay, right? In terms of you know, what makes me qualified to do this, I've been a management consultant for over 20 years. For the last six years, I've run a consulting business working with large enterprises, improving productivity in their operations. Now, what we see is a lot of our clients are adopting lots of new technologies to drive productivity, from robotics and automation to IoT and machine learning. But a lot of them are struggling to realize value from their investments. And there's a couple of really good reasons why. Among the first is businesses can't manage the complexity of these technologies. There's a lot of volume, there's a big volume of data generated. And what ends up happening is they go back to Excel to do everything from reporting to analytics to modeling. There's also a big skills issue. It's very hard to hire and retain specialized skills 
particularly if you're a small mine in the middle of nowhere. The other big one is they don't actually know their customer. It's not the CEO, it's not the CIO, it's the supervisors and operators who make the day-to-day -day decisions. Most solutions focus on the cool bits, the analytics, the insights, the pretty charts, but they don't actually know how to make these insights actionable. The really difficult problem to solve is converting those insights and actions that make a measurable impact to the bottom line. And that's where we come in. That's where managed analytics comes in. We've developed a highly specialized modeling simulation and analytics solution for asset intensive businesses. We've already used it to identify and deliver hundreds of millions of dollars in productivity improvements. And now our clients are asking to use it themselves. The secret source, if you want to call it that, is not our solution, or not just our solution, but our deployment model. The managed services model is key to solving many technology adoption ch challenges. And we provide our customers with a platform that's designed to support decision-making at every level of the business, turning those insights into action. We're gaining traction quite quickly. We're currently running our first MSP pilot, and we've already been requested for proposals by two of the largest mining companies worldwide. So what's our ask, right? We need to scale our solution for enterprise level security and scalability, and to add lots of new capabilities and features. For this, we're talking to investors to fund development. We're also building our team. So I'm looking for a head of product development, data scientists, full stack developers to take over from my one man army, which is basically myself and help build the future of enterprise productivity. Thank you. Thank you, Nikhil. That was great. You had lots of information there. Lots of us too. I absolutely love it. Let's uh, let's get, get the action going um, in the chat. So if any of that's resonating with you, please pop it in the chat and you can direct message. Over to our judges, whoever first unmutes. Yes, Johan, you've, you've got your, you, you are very quick. Over to you for some feedback and Brian, start the judges feedback time, please. I got really excited there. Um, <laughs> we've, we've got some mining companies on the book, so we'd love to talk to you about the service and how you could maybe help them. Have you got the hundreds of millions of dollars in productivity documented as case studies that you can prove that that's what it's done? Yes, yes. So as I mentioned earlier, I, I run a consulting firm and we've been, we've been in business for just under seven years now. And we work with many of the largest mining companies in the world. So um, yeah, those, those productivity uh, and, and volume improvements are, are, are well known and documented. Fantastic. And did you say you're looking for investment? Absolutely. Um, so the solution's been developed in-house by me over several years, right? It's a tool that we use but we find our clients now really want to use it. But I have the challenge of moving from what's essentially a, a glorified MVP to something that's enterprise ready, security, scalability, multi-tenant solutions, you know, getting it fully web enabled. Uh, and that's gonna take um, a fair, uh, I guess a fair amount of investment, but also a skill set that I quite honestly don't have. Um, you know, I was a coder in my past life and I code for fun, but that's the extent of my capabilities. Awesome. And who in the companies will end up using this? So, uh, so we, we have multiple points of contact. Uh, the entry point tends to be either business improvement, uh, which is tasked with productivity in, in most of the large manufacturing and mining businesses, uh, or else operations themselves. Uh, we also touch on the planning function. We also touch on finance because we have modules in there to help um, uh, smoothen or make more effective the whole planning process. Uh, there's a lot to unpack in the solution. And, you know, in, in the interest of time, I kept the, uh, the pitch fairly short. But a key value proposition for us is also the ability to leverage data from multiple systems to generate, uh, to support decision making across the entire business value chain. So you don't have a planning team working with one set of data and a business improvement team building their own models and an ops team building their own models and a finance team with their own models, which is exactly how it happens today. And all of this sitting in Excel. So uh, we, we work across functions, but the predominant or the primary users tend to be in business improvement and operations. It's a licensing agreement with them? With, is it no. We, we don't want to license the software. Um, you know, one of the challenges I mentioned in my pitch was um, there's an assumption that you, um, you build this really cool solution and then you license it to clients and that they'll go away and use it. Um, I've seen dozens of these solutions come and go over the years because uh, the skill sets you need are increasingly more and more complex. 
And sometimes it's, uh, or mostly, it's very, very difficult for businesses to hire the kind of people, invest in the training and support those systems for, you know, for years to come. Our approach is a managed services platform, which effectively means we don't just provide our clients with a software solution and a license, but we have a team of data scientists, of domain experts, of business analysts who actually work with them on building their models, managing their data, generating insights, um, and providing specific actions for them to actually go and implement. The, the gap, as I said, is not generating cool insights. The, the gap is actually taking those insights and converting it into something that an operator or a supervisor will do tomorrow on the shop floor. And, and that's where our insights from consulting uh, comes in as well. Awesome. Amazing. Lynn, I saw you unmute. Mm. Off you go. Yes, Nicole. Uh, sounds uh, very exciting. Um, insights into action is obviously a very um, important promise. Um, just wondering, could you give us an example of how you've improved productivity for a client? Uh, because those, those examples are really important. All right, so we do a lot of work in mining, right? And in mining, the biggest metric, particularly when prices are high, is get more tons out of the ground. And more capital or more equipment is extremely expensive. Uh, we did an engagement with a, a large mining company in Africa last year, where we took them from uh, producing just under 2 million tons to um, 2.64 million tons, right, to be exact. The value of that additional 640,000 additional tons uh, is over $100 million, right, at market prices. We've just done an exercise at the end of last year where we helped one of the biggest mining companies restructure their operations, um, develop new scenarios, new operating scenarios in terms of how they run their businesses, what products to produce, uh, what volumes to produce, how to split it across different um, um, products and uh, distribution chains uh, and the sum total value of that goes up into the hundreds of millions as well. Right, I've actually been in Perth and I've seen how BHP operates their their minds remotely. It's, it's fascinating. So you must your technology you must take account of their operations, which are very advanced. Yeah, absolutely. And look, um, BHP and Rio and and Anglo American are probably um, far ahead on the technology curve. Um, and they have the capital to be able to invest, you know, tens or hundreds of millions of dollars in automation and driverless trucks and all these cool things. Uh, the fact of the matter is that the vast majority of mining companies out there uh, simply don't have um, the capital or the desire to spend, um, you know, those kind of uh, yeah. amounts on uh, technology and driverless trucks. It will happen. It will happen over a period of time. But the challenge is always going to remain. You want to have your operational people focusing on getting the job done, not trolling through endless Excel sheets, uh, you know, and building models. Um, and what we find is there's there's a lot of inefficiency in the process because every new system that comes in, you know, there's a new AI solution, there's a new drone-based, um, you know, serving system. Everything comes on and it becomes another layer on another layer on another layer the operator in the pit or underground, he's getting overloaded. He's just getting a deluge of reports and data every day. And honestly, they just say, well, put it all to the side. We need something that makes our lives simpler and tells us what to do, what we need to focus on. And that's where we come in, right? On helping decision support at the front line. And so you're planning to scale up uh, and you require investment for that. So, are you planning to outsource that technology or how are you going to do that? No, uh, I would never outsource. I would build a team. Uh, the mm -hmm. product is too dynamic. The mm -hmm. solutions that we would give our clients would need to be, uh, would need to evolve over, you know, over a period of time. Uh, our core, um, our core value really would be in our IP and, and our delivery models. So I think in the long term, it would be far more expensive and less efficient to outsource uh, than to build your own team. And so your clients are expecting you to scale up? Uh, or new clients? Are you seeking new clients by scaling up? So at the moment, we're selling into existing and past clients who we worked with, right? So BHP is a good example because we've worked with BHP in the past and our clients actually, South32, who, as you know, came out of, um, out of, out of BHP. Um, so 
they want us to deliver the capability that we've been showing them or demonstrating to them in our previous engagements. They want to be able to do that in-house, but there's a lot of additional capability that, we, um, that we're building in that will really take the solution to the next level. Okay, thank you. Incredible, great questions too um, from the judges so far. David, did you have anything you'd like to add quickly and then we will get on to our next picture. Quickly, uh, Nikhil, where do you where are you looking for building a team? Is it does it have to be Australia, a specific region of Australia, or are you open to the location? Uh, look, I think it's all about the right people, right? And in 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 the post COVID world, we've got to we've got to be realistic about meeting people face to face anyway. So while you know being close by is always an advantage, um, I think you know for the right person or the right team, we we build it wherever they were. Or whatever they are. Awesome. Thank you. Well, thank you. I think that was the most questions we've ever had <laughs> for picture. So there you go. You got everyone going. Thank you so much. You can rest and relax. Um, and we will go on to our next picture. So you can now mute yourself. And I will actually ask Than from OSS, I hope that I've pronounced that correctly, to unmute, um, get yourself settled and let us know when we can start the clock for you. And good luck. Cool. Thanks. Um, can everyone hear me good? We sure can. Well done. <laughs> yeah. So uh, first of all, Nikhil, that's uh, amazing progress. It's I'm, a, I'm really new to this startup world and just seeing someone who's further down and looking to scale and, um, you know, in that side, it's really cool just seeing it happen um, and hear about it. So although I don't probably understand 80% of what you're talking about, um, I can tell that it's something that it's a problem that... Um, that's happening in your field and industry. So thanks for sharing. And probably a tough act to follow. <laughs> Don't worry, that. we are all behind you. We're all behind you. Are you ready for us to start the clock? Yeah, uh, before we start, I'm just gonna introduce myself quickly. Okay. Yeah. So hi everyone um, of Silicon Beach. I am Tan. I am the founder of Us. The, yeah, I guess I'll explain it as I go. Yeah, cool. Uh, just let me know when it started. Okay. Uh, so, well, you might have heard of a really small scandal between Facebook and Cambridge Analytica, where 300 million Facebook profiles were breached, uh, the data was breached and used to influence elections all over the world. Um, and it's kind of a scary thought because we're all human and we all can be subjected to manipulation. And I can already see some people uncomfortably sort of shifting in their seats when I have Facebook and data or privacy in the same sentence. Um, more and more, we're gonna be giving our data out um, online, not really knowing what's going to be happening behind the scenes. And through my research and interviews with just everyday people, I found that a lot of people are becoming more and more anxious about where their data is and feeling a lot more powerful, uh, powerless, feeling less powerless, feeling, feeling powerless, yeah. Uh, whereas businesses are feeling really empowered by data. So you can already see the dichotomy between the two conversations that we have about data. We also hear that data is supposed to be the oil of the 21st century, but if we are the people making all that data, where is our cut? Um, and so this is where us comes in. So us is the future of data ownership, and it's a platform that empowers everyday people like you and me to be able to control and manage our online data. And if we so choose to rent it to businesses as insights. Um, what we're trying to do is to turn an unproductive asset that everyone has and to make it more tangible, easy to control and to give you and not just businesses value. So my big ask is that we recently launched a landing page MVP to garner sort of interest to see if this is something that people would like. And we started getting a lot of signups, not just from the users who say they want this, but also businesses who want to be more data ethical. Um, our big ask is to, uh, we need help with, some, with the data analytics side. If anyone um, who has any expertise or experience in that field to help us sort of take the business end of us um, to the next level to help us build that platform where both businesses and people can benefit from data and not just businesses. Um, but yeah, that's my big ask and that's oh, my pitch. 
Congratulations. Well done. And you're getting lots of lovely positive comments. Tim Humphreys, you're just a, you're so divine. That was wonderful. He's already signed up, he says in the chat. So oh. make sure you <laughs> Oh, cool. All right, I'll, I'll definitely... And he loves, he loves the idea. And I, lo I love the comment about people shifting uncomfortably in the seats. I know there's a couple of lawyers on the call and yeah, we always do when we hear about this. So uh, yeah, it's incredible shifting in my seat. Um, well done. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. Lynn, you're on, you've unmuted. Would you like to go first? Uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, I'd like your point about uh, people with the power and people who don't have the power, it's, it's quite obvious, and that data is the oil of the 21st century. So you're certainly on to a very good idea here. Just a couple of questions. Why the name? How did you come up with that name? Us. So uh, really funny story. Um, us has a double meaning. First of all, I was watching a documentary about windmills, um, and I learned that windmills sort of First of all, so I'll, I'll start from the start. Us in Norwegian means us, and Dada is about us. Mm -hmm. um, us is also the name of a windmill in Norway. Mm -hmm. And what windmills do is they convert a basic agricultural resource like grain um, that everyday people sort of make, and they refine it into something more like flour, and they sell it to businesses. So that's what we're trying to do. We're like the windmill that helps sort of people convert their data that they have into grain, into, into flour, and to help them sell it to businesses. And the money goes back to them um, for that. So that's the sort of dynamic we have with us. Uh, now, thank you for that very interesting story. And uh, I was also wondering, in this business, the main uh, point that you'll be marketing is trust. Why should people trust you with their data? Yeah. So there are a number of ways that we try to build trust with people. Um, the first way is through our communication and branding. So we don't look like a lot of tech companies use a lot of gradients, look very flashy. Um, we try to bring it back down to earth, try to humanize the technology um, so that people can feel um, comfortable and confident with what we're trying to achieve with our mission. Um, and with our communication, we really push out this is like what we want to do we want to empower people so people can feel less anxious and, and more controlled um, we also very um, we prioritize our data and security and we make sure that at every step of the way that people's data are encrypted protected safe um, and you know making sure that everything is working before anything happens on that sort of build yeah yeah and so how do you, how do you plan to, do you plan to monetize it or are you doing it as a social good? Yeah, so basically if you think of uh, what we do is we're, we're sort of the middle, like a broker and we sort of want to empower everyday people to build their own data profiles. And if they so choose to, um, you know, they connect their Facebook to it or they can sign in with us, for example. And so they have a sort of list of places where they signed in and what sort of data they've given out already. Um, but with that, you build your own data profile and you as a person, individual sort of person can choose to rent that to businesses as insights. Um, and so uh, you decide what you want to do with your data and you're empowered to choose uh, whether you just want to manage it or you want to also manage and sell it as insights. Right, okay. So you're at a very early stage now with the MVP and looking for supporters for the concept, right? Yeah, we're looking for people who work in data analytics to help us sort of elevate, elevate the insights part of um, us. So, okay, well done. Thank you. Yeah. Love that metaphor. And you're getting quite a lot of comments on that as well um, in the chat you'll have to check out. David, I think you um, unmuted next and then we'll go over to Johan. Off you go. Thanks. Tan, that's right down my alley. Uh, you, you, you have a brother in arms here with me. Um, do, you need, do you need cooperation from Facebook? Can, can they just lock you out and say anyone who is using your service uh, cannot use their service anymore? Yeah. So at the moment, we're sort of working in steps. Um, our first milestone is to be able to allow people to manage and control the demographic data, for example, and then to be able to rent that out as insights. 
Um, and eventually, as we're working through our milestones of demographic, psychographic, social data, tracking data, um, all this will be up to the person to upload. So Facebook has a, a way where you can download your own data from Facebook, um, whether Facebook would like that person to share it or not. Um, the person can, as their own agent, download the data and input it into our platform and grow their own data profile through that way. Um, but yeah, we'll be constantly looking for opportunities and trying to work with these platforms to see if we can connect with these things. Okay. And you're focusing right now mainly on Facebook. What other what what other platforms are you looking on to integrate with? Yeah. So again, uh, talking about the milestones, our first milestone is trying to have people's demographic data sort of protected and then being able to turn into insights. Eventually, you want to do so search data. Um, you know, and later on when there's a lot more people, users trust um, transactional data. And imagine sort of the insights that you can get and businesses can get from sharing or seeing, you know, this one person who um, all this transactional data paired with their demographic or their psychographic, and that person has willingly opted in to share that um, and also will be benefiting from sharing that data. So yeah, it will be, it'll be a whole ecosystem um, that we want to build, not just demographic, not just social, but, you know, search, transactional, every aspect where you share your data. We want to be that ecosystem where you can manage it. How many, how many users do you need to, to, to actually have a value proposition for businesses? Yeah, so our platform is a double-sided market. And with any double-sided market, you have the chicken or the egg problem. If you don't have enough users, there won't be any businesses who are interested in the insights you provide. If you don't have any businesses, you won't have any users who want to stay around. And so right now with our landing page, we really focus on the users and sort of building that relationship with the users first. And we become the first business that acknowledges their data as them and to rent it out if we need any insights to be help build our own app. Um, and then as we get more and more users and grow more and more users, we can take that as a case study and bring it to more businesses and onboard them on that side as we build um, that end of the platform. Cool, thank you very much. Fantastic. And you'll, I think KJ is in the chat asking about um, how does the US monetize this, but this might be a question that Johan might be asking as well or interested in, but there are questions coming in for you. So you can have a look and answer those as well. Johan, yeah. to, over to you for some feedback. Awesome, cool. Um, so I see when you, when you started talking about this, yes, this is definitely a problem. Me and David have actually discussed this as well. Um, great problem to solve. I'm trying to think of how it would work because right now I have my Facebook data, I have my Google data, Instagram data, YouTube, et cetera, I know there. And so is this a protected layer that I feed through, which then logs me in into all the other services and then collects the data? Is it a service which I download all my data from Google uh, Facebook, et cetera, and upload in here, and then I create my profile? Or is it, because uh, we, you know, 90 seconds is not enough for you to tell me everything. Or yep. is it something like DuckDuckGo, where the reason DuckDuckGo is popular is because everything, you know, we know the money is not going wherever. But now it's a DuckDuckGo plus a revenue share where, hey, every time you search for something, you're going to make money as well because you're sharing the data of your searches, that sort of thing. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. Um, definitely with the already established platforms, it's going to be hard to integrate with them and to work with them because they have their own sort of agenda and business model with how they earn money from their own data. Um, the best way I can think of it and explain it to you is like later in the future when we do build an ecosystem, imagine if you will, you could log in with us the same way you can log in with Google. But with us, um, you have an app that shows you exactly where you've logged in, what sort of data you've given to all these websites. Um, and you can then from your phone and your fingertips, just manage it. Um, if you've logged into Maya a year ago um, and you sort of like don't want them to continue having access to your data, your account, your logins and everything, you can just swipe to, to opt out. Uh, and so we're looking for that level of protection and control 
um, and to build that ecosystem up slowly. Yeah. I think, um, I think you are, like most pioneers, ahead of your time. I think this is going to be a major problem in about two to three years where people really, but you have that time to build out everything and build out the ecosystem. So yeah. you the one who's, you know, top of market at that point in time. So well done. Yeah, thank you. Congratulations. Great pitch. Well done. So you can now take a breath you. and you can mute yourself <laughs> and go and have a look at that chat because there's lots in there and you're getting lots of people clapping as well. Okay. Well done you. <laughs> Thanks everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Over to our next picture. We have Brian Deathloff and Brian is um, from Intaglio Maps. Have I said that correctly? I'll get you to unmute. Close, close enough. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So my name is Brian. Um, I'm from Intaglio Maps. Uh, Intaglio Maps is an application that allows businesses to, uh, I guess, analyze and visualize data within the framework of their org chart. So if, if you're familiar with GIS software, um, Intaglio Maps is GIS software for groups of people. So uh, it allows you to build out um, an, an org chart that, that represents the kind of the formal relationships and formal roles within an organization. And then you can layer on top of your formal relationships uh, as, as, many, as many other types of data as you want. So as many layers as you want that, that can be assigned to, to either an individual person or, or groups of people. Uh, so right now, uh, Nikhil kind of talked about this, but businesses just swim in data. And it's a lot of times it's difficult to draw, uh, to draw lines between them and, and to kind of be able to aggregate them and to analyze them. But um, if, you, if you think about being able to layer all of this data uh, within your org chart and to look at it uh, for, and from an organization perspective, that's, that's what this uh, allows you to do. Uh, so the application, um, you upload, your, you upload your, org, your org chart, it draws it for you. You can create as many layers as you would like. Um, and then the, it's, it's free to use, uh, works just like GIS software would work. Um, but then the way that we make money is by selling premium layers. So if you think about the types of uh, data that you would get maybe from a consulting firm or from a market research firm. Um, we provide that as a layer that fits onto your org chart. Uh, and then you can then take that and you have the context of your organization to understand how that insight, that management insight, uh, or that consulting insight or market research insight fits within your, within your business. It allows you to make better decisions and, and manage people better. And was and your end of your pitch, Brian? That's it. Yeah, that's it. and I guess what my my ask. Uh, yes. I'm looking for a, I'm looking for a co-founder. I don't. I realize that the odds are very low. Uh, looking for a co-founder. Um, and uh, is you know no particular uh, skills that I'm looking for. So, Brian, don't say that. Um, you, you'll be amazed who you find in these Silicon Beach virtual pitch nights. You've put it out in the universe and um, it's there. So I love it. Thank you so much. Yep. Okay, over to our judges. David, I might go with you first. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Brian. First, I would love to know what a GIS software is. Yeah, so GIS software is, is mapping software. So if you think about like, if you ever look at a, a map that has a floodplains or lakes or like Google Maps would be GIS software. And if you think about, if you go to Google Maps and you click um, the satellite layer, it shows you the same map, but you get a different perspective. You get the satellite perspective. Uh, so this is this is that same thing, but for a business. So that you look, you have a uh, you know a formal org chart, but then you can click a different layer and it shows you a different perspective of the business with with a network that fits within the within the org chart. And what is the value that you add to a business with that functionality? Uh, so I, what I'm trying to sell is our insights into how employees behave and how they, uh, I guess, make decisions. So right now, if you were to hire a consulting firm, the consulting firm would come in and they would they would have their proprietary data that they would use to go into your workforce and to talk about, well, you should treat these people this way, and this is what um, this is how these people behave, etc. Uh, and it's very expensive and it's very time consuming. If you have that data as a layer that you can fit onto someone's org chart without having to go into the business, uh, it makes it much easier for the business to get to get those types of insights that normally they would have to pay a lot of money for and, and have to kind of uh, be be fairly uh, bothered by. Okay. Um, but you do not do you have do you have a, a, a use case some sort of a model how much that can, could save a company? Um, no. no, no. 
Cool. I think I'm done. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks, David. Lynn, over to you. You're on mute. Yeah, this is a very interesting idea, and I love the simplicity of it, or the apparent simplicity of it. Uh, could you just explain, David, um, at what stage you're at? Um, the idea sounds yeah, so, great. What stage? Yeah, so, <laughs> well, so I'm developing it right now. I have the front end. Um, front end's done. Started working on the back end this week. Uh, I've been full time on it for, I guess, five weeks now. Mm -hmm. Um, and so um, it's kind of that's that's where I'm at. So hopefully in another four to five weeks I'll have uh, uh, an, an MVP that that people can start to use and interact with. Okay. And looking for a co-founder, are you looking for a tech co-founder? What sort of co-founder? Uh, so look, I mean, at, at the moment it's it's me doing everything, uh, and there there's two components to it. There's uh, building the application, and then there's preparing the data to be able to get. Um, to deliver these insights and to, to, to get to build these layers that can be sold back to companies. I think at, at this point, um, I can do I can do both of them, but I, I, I just need someone to, to support and it's it's a pretty quick journey to get people up to speed. So I'm just I'm looking for someone who can give 100% of their time, which I realize the odds are the odds are very low. And ev everyone that I know is uh, well established with mortgages, so they, they can't leave their companies. <laughs> and uh, you have an IT background, do you? Or no. Yeah? Uh -uh. Oh, no. how, how are you doing it then without uh, having an IT background? Oh, I mean, it's not very, it's not very complicated, right? So it's just all, it was just taught myself. It's all JavaScript. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's, it's not very complicated. It's not, not, it's not a big deal. Okay. Um, where I think the idea could be useful uh, in terms of layers is because so many people now are working in teams. Yeah. So uh, yeah, there were, used to, organizations used to be quite highly structured in terms of their organizational chart, and then they had responsibilities going to various people. But uh, now there are responsibilities going to lots of people and their involvement in teams. Yeah. So have you thought of, I know you said uh, it would be helpful in analyzing decisions, how in decisions, are made. have you thought of linking it up with appraisal of people? Because if you can show how... Yeah, they yeah, I have. So yeah, so like if 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 you were going to do uh, employee performance reviews, any any type of data that can be that can be assigned to an individual or to a group of, of individual can be represented in a layer. Mm -hmm. So uh, if it has to do with a person, you can put it into a layer. You can and you can turn layers on and off, and you can turn layers on and off for individuals as well. So if you had a sales layer with a sales KPI, you could turn the layer off for everyone in your organization except for the salespeople, and then but visually see that. So if you had a big org chart. Uh, maybe you have, you know, salespeople in Victoria. You have salespeople in Queensland. You'd be able to pull that up, and you could see the dis the dis different groups, and you could see how they were performing visually and on the same org chart as as a way to visualize that data. Is this a, a 3D type chart, or is it 2D, or what? No, is it's it's 2D. So it, it, what you're saying is, or you seem to be saying, that there's no one or no other organization doing this. Mm -mm. Really. Mm -mm. And you've checked. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, there are, there are tons of apps where you can build org charts, right? So there are tons of apps where you can go and you can build process flows and org charts, but I, I haven't found one that that deals with it like a GIS software where you can layer on top of it uh, and where you can sell, where you can buy premium layers for, for, for insights. Right. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Lynn. And Johan, over to you. Cool. Hey, um, Brian. <clears throat> Um, so we're, uh, okay. We're, we're building a platform like this for a very, very huge company who's invested hundreds and hundreds of people and man hours into it. Mm -hmm. It involves a lot of psychology. Um, yep. it's, uh, it's extremely advanced. It may have full case studies of how the little micro improvements on within each manager and every team, how they could make little tweaks in their little rewards, their dashboard, et cetera. Yeah, exactly. And then they've got all that documented. And so they are very, um, that they've invested significant amount and they've already got massive database mm -hmm. that they're gonna be trialing this on. You said you're five weeks in. And yeah. one, of the, one of the things of being an entrepreneur is seeing gaps and then going after things and you know, trying to solve that problem. But one, because I've been a I've been a pioneer before, and I've spent years of my life building things, and then later on to find out, 
you know, there's already something that I didn't know there was existing or, you yeah. know, I'm, I'm trying to save you a little bit of time because mm -hmm. the, the idea that the technology is cool to layer on and then for a CEO to click buttons and say, oh, cool, you know, here's all my sales. And, but I don't know whether there's enough thought gone into how the end user is going to benefit from this. Okay. People can't hear me properly. All right, let me. Well, I can hear you. <clears throat> no, you, we can hear you fine. I can now, hear you fine. So yeah. I'm not yeah. sure if there's some, yeah. Okay, no problem. Cool. Yeah. So... Wait, you're, sorry, you're, you're telling me that someone's already building this, but that you're not sure how it applies to people? It feels like a mixed message there. No, 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 sorry. I know exactly how it applies. I know that they've got case studies that's proven that it's going to improve. And who who's building it? Well, one of my companies is. Is it is is it out yet? No. Okay. Yeah. Do you need somebody else to work on it? See you, Johan. All right. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> this, this, this is um yeah no, they've got it all down I, mean, I think there's room there's room for more than one person right i think the, there key, always is. the key is on the on the data and the insights that you can provide yeah and and so if you can provide better insights than than than, a, than another application then it kind of makes more sense but so yeah so i think it's it's interesting so sorry man i don't i don't mean to rain on your parade but i wish oh it, do, it does it it actually doesn't at all it just kind of i think confirms the fact that it's valuable Yep. Um, and I think I have interesting concepts in terms of the layers and the types of layers and, and access to people who can build certain types of layers that, that will be beneficial. So, yep, And there are different markets, I guess, in terms of, you know, maybe it's, you, you've got um, kind of cheaper option. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And the freemium model works and you'll, you'll get much more uptake. These guys are going to be priced at, you know, let's say $100,000, for example. That's not the actual number, but it's, and that's an annual license. Yeah, look, and my, mine's going to be free. I'm just going to sell, sell the layers. Yeah, cool. Well done. I'm going to end it there, Brian. Fantastic. <laughs> oh, sorry, Johan, yes? And I think Brian's a bit of a genius to say that he thought himself Java and built this all in a couple of weeks. Wow. Having no coding I mean, I, I wasn't going to say it, but I was thinking exactly the same thing. So um, there you go. You're a genius, Brian. <laughs> Fantastic. If you'd like to mute yourself, thank you so much. And we will um, head over to our next picture. So David Heasley, could you please unmute and do your pitching idea? And thank you so much for being here. David's one of my old friends. <laughs> go, David. <laughs> Well, thank you, Karen. Can you hear me all right? All right, Karen's asked me to um, pitch tonight. I gather needed somebody extra to pitch. Um, I run a small uh, consultancy slash law firm specialising in IP and intellectual property, uh, commercial law and intellect, um, telecommunications type issues. So I actually have quite a bit to do with companies like those who are pitching here tonight <clears throat> and have it a bit to do with some startups. Pardon me, Karen, I'm losing my voice. <clears throat> um, so what my background is in large corporate um, to be consultancies and in defense and telco. So I've got a fair background in IT and IP. So what I can do for a company such as a startup or a company that's further along the startup chain is have a look at trademarking, contracts, licensing, um, any of the agreements they may have with either suppliers or customers. Make sure that they're not doing something silly like breaching the um, GDPR, which uh, I was thinking about with one of the earlier um, um, pitches actually around the data there could be some issues in certain jurisdictions but happy to have that conversation offline and so that's basically my value add I can give years of working in large American defense companies working for Telstra and the like into the smaller organizations um, and um, that's what I'm doing these days so I'm probably going to cut this short Karen because 
I kind of came into this cold without any prep. You know what, David, thank you so much. And I am really glad that you pitched because I think people need to know that your this kind of expertise is sitting in the audience um, and that you're here, obviously, with this kind of knowledge and experience that you can actually help the pitchers in here, which I know is really relevant. Yes. What I'm prepared to say, though, is instead of a pitch, if a startup approaches me and says, hey, I've got this idea, I'm quite happy to throw an hour or two at looking at your problem. I mightn't be able to solve it, but I might be able to tell you what your problem is. And if it's a startup who doesn't have, you know, two cents to rub together, I'm happy to do it for them because I understand how hard it is to start up. So if people want to get in contact who are startups, I'm more than happy. Obviously, if they're not a startup, I'll, I'll still work with them. But <laughs> any of the um, startup type community, um, I'm more than happy to have a bit of a look at. So oh, just thank putting you. it out there. Thank you so much. And for full transparency, David's also on the Legally Yours Network, so I get to know him very well. He has a five-star rating. People absolutely love um, the work that he does. We've always had amazing feedback um, about David, and he really is very, very generous in his time um, and is able to kind of provide some big um, sort of experience and expertise to these startups, which is just invaluable, um, particularly in those early stages. So thank you, David. You did me thank a favour then um, <laughs> pitching. I appreciate it. Well, we've got one last pitch left, and that's um, Alexa, who's a very good friend to the Silicon Beach community. Um, Alexa, would you like to unmute and pitch away? Or not? <laughs> Did he leave? Oh, no. Has anyone seen Alexa? Is he not in the waiting room, Brian? He was, he was there. He just sent me a message. Ah, he got scared. That's okay. Oh, no, there he is. Alexa, you're here. Oh, he's just getting his mic right. You're building up the uh, the atmosphere, Alexa. I know it's very good with... How's it going? <laughs> Are you almost ready? Yep. This is when we need some music. Anyone good at singing? No? Johan, you've unmuted. <laughs> But I can, I can tell you a good story. I started up a company and I remember the lawyer tried to, well, not tried to, said, hey, I should get this thing reviewed for you. It's probably going to be another five grand. And now back then, five grand was a lot of money. And I said, no, 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 it's okay. I trust these people. They're good. Blah, 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 blah. Anyway, here we are. How many years later? And the, the company grew significantly. And I had the other founders saying, hey, there's a clause in the, in the document which you didn't read, which said your shares were given to you in return, in part off. And um, anyway, there was one little clause, which I'd ever picked up. And David's just look at him. He's just going, yep, yep, you got screwed. <laughs> but, so it's important, you know, just three words or four words can change an entire document and change the entire efforts that you could put in later on down the track. So definitely. Great, great story. And, and, you know, Legally Yours started because, you know, we really wanted to be able to sort of, you know, help people differentiate between the lawyers that we've vetted um, and that we know are all about customer experience and that they're all, um, you know, fixed fee and value-based pricing. So no billable hours, billable units um, with any of the lawyers in our network. So great story. Alexa, do you have your mic ready? Because if not, we've had someone else approach us and say they're happy to pitch. Are you good to go? Oh, no, he's waving it on. All right, Cloud, you're up. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> um, yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm Cloud. Um, I'm the founder and CEO of Kaizen X. It is, um, it's a service design agency. And basically what we do is um, building the business of experience. So uh, no matter what kind of business you are, what kind of a startup you're trying to do, we're actually building an experience for you. We're defining your value proposition. We're defining and implementing and improving the best customer experience that your clients, whether they are like um, your like local customers or like um, B2B, business to business, uh, we're improving your customer experiences, designing and implementing it so you could win the market basically. And we also do like 
strategies, winning strategy and business model, and also partnering with Go Viable, one of the Silicon Beach partners to um, commercialize your product and providing you um, go-to-market strategies actually for um, also like um, with specific I product with IP and also partnering with uh, different industries like um, medtech and so on. Yeah. Thank you so much, Cloud, and thank you no. for that because <laughs> that was an impromptu one as well. Judges, did you have any questions um, for Cloud? David, you know Cloud quite well. Would you any questions that you'd like yep. to add? Um, yes, Cloud, thanks for, for, for jumping in. Um, no. Your services are, what, what size of companies, of businesses are you working with? Well, actually it ranges because um, I have different channels to reach my clients. So I have, I work as a startup mentors and mentor in different organization. And some of them are just like solo entrepreneurs or their company, just like three co-founders or two co-founders, but also partnering with uh, different partners of mine. I work with companies that it's, are for from maybe 100 to 500. Okay. Yeah. So it's different when you work with a solo entrepreneur or like a, um, a startup, you start to design everything from scratch, which is actually really wonderful experience because you, you get to actually tell them about this kind of how to humanize your product, how to make it more human centric, how to, you know, uh, consider empathy and how to win the market and how to shape those kind of strategies. Are you with me? That's okay. Yeah. I think he's still yeah. listening. He's just lost oh. his cam webcam. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but then you, you blew him away, Cloud. He's yeah. <laughs> it's gone off. <laughs> it's all right. But then when I work with um, uh, medium tier companies or tier work companies, I actually not uh, making everything from scratch, but more rather implementing and improving the strategies, either values or either the way they communicate with customers. Maybe even I, I implement or improve or design from scratch one touch point. One touch point in your business can actually matter a lot. And the way we design it, we consider it as a whole omni new channel. And it's just a one touch point. It's just like a phone call or like a message or something, but we design it from scratch to become and represent your whole service offering and actually attract customer and client to your service. Cool. Great, thank you so much. Lynn no and Johan, did you have any questions for um, Cloud while we have her here? Otherwise we can head into breakout rooms. Really oh. great clubhouse. <clears throat> Sorry? That's I said, you're really cool on Clubhouse. Oh, really? Oh, thank you, Johan. <laughs> thank you. Oh, there's a good shout out. Lynn. Oh, yes. Um, thank you, Cloud. Uh, thank you. Lynn. She has uh, done some very interesting work with us that was very useful in terms of insight as to the value proposition for Ideaspa yeah. uh, and looking at the values, uh, asking really good questions. I think making you think. Uh, you have a very good questionnaire. Yeah and you run sessions very well. Um, yeah. You know, it's that help, think, help you think through uh, what you're offering uh, and what is actually valued. Yeah. Proposition. Yes. Uh, yeah, so I can, I can do that for you. <laughs> so thank you. Oh, that's so fantastic. Look at you, Cloud, lucky you pitch. You got all this love and adoration and that's what we do here at the Silicon yeah. Beach. We're so yeah. supportive and we love everyone. Once you're part of our community, you become part of the furniture. So that's awesome. Thank you so much, Cloud. So this actually now ends the official part of the pitching um, of the night. Um, wonderful Jeanette is now going to put everybody in breakout rooms and the judges will deliberate around the prizes and we will see everyone back here at around six. 55 um, where we will do the announcements and the prizes so judges make sure you sort of yeah stay in a room because sometimes we lose judges <laughs> around but anyway we'll, we'll do that so thank you everyone what just be patient with us while we pop you in the breakout rooms and Jeanette, thank you Ren. oh thanks Sebastian nice to see you yeah it's been a long while it has been a long while you've been keeping well uh trying to oh well, that's <laughs> good that's good and got Easter break coming up yeah, yeah, that's right. It'd be a good opportunity to have a break. 
<laughs> it sure yeah. is. I, Sebastian, you, why, yeah. why are we waiting to go in the breakout rooms? Why don't you introduce everyone? Because you're a long-term Silicon oh. Venture. And well, Jeanette can okay. just put us my, all in the room. My, <laughs> my name is Sebastian. Uh, and I'm a foreigner in that I was born in Hong Kong. But I lived here for more than four decades now. In fact, Easter Sunday is a very special day for me because... Easter Sunday, 41 years ago, I landed in Melbourne Airport and I got a cultural shock because having come from Hong Kong, which is a bustling city, I thought I landed on the most quieted, sorry, the quietest airport in the world. <laughs> At that stage, I didn't realize oh. that, um, that Aussie people like to take holidays is during this time, especially Easter Sunday. So anyhow, over the years, I've grown to love this country. I'm a, I'm a naturalized citizen and um, I now prefer the lifestyle here rather than the busy one in Hong Kong. Um, my professional career is in uh, what used to be called computer or system analyst and software development. Uh, it's dating me because in those days, the term IT wasn't even around. <laughs> um, so I, I use languages that probably you never heard of or things like COBOL, Fortran, PL1, Pascal, and I could read to it off. Oh, I anyway, love it. Well, Sebastian, um, we're, our breakout yeah, rooms are ready. Sorry to interrupt you. I'm, I'm really I'm excited. <laughs> I'm really excited. Make sure you stay in one of the breakout rooms because you'll be able to well, continue thanks, on this conversation. So sorry to thanks, cut you Karen. short. We're going to get into no, the no, breakout no, rooms. No but problem. we love having you here, Sebastian. It's great to see thanks, you. Thanks, Karen. I appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you. See you soon. See bye. You soon. Bye, bye. 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 We're going into the breakout rooms, Jeanette. Yes? Great. Why am I still here, Jeanette? Okay, because I think you were dug in earlier under your name. Hold on, let me. Ah, I'm Silicon Beach. Yeah, because you're earlier uh, David Hauser. Yes, so sorry for that. Let me, um, I've tried to. Where is Silicon Beach? I, I'll try to. I, I, think, I think I can add you anymore. I have to close that room to be able to make you join. Wait, but wait I think you can, you can click on breakout room and join room one. Wait a second. I have my second computer here. I just mute myself here and use my other computer. Okay. Uh, da -da.
Yeah, we did. Ah, very good. All right. I think just a couple more people are coming back in as we speak. So I will be introducing the judges to unmute and announce the prize winners. Um, so I'll just wait. The numbers are still going up. All right, actually. So Lynn, over to you first. Would you like to announce the winner of the Ideas Spice Bespoke Prize? Thank you very much, Karen. It was a very hard choice, an excellent presentation. Uh, however, I thought that uh, there was one that would particularly benefit from having their idea shared on Idea Spies because I think it can be explained simply in 100 words or less. And we've set up a new ideation category for such ideas. So I thought um, the one that would benefit most is the organizational chart idea from Brian, the one that's going to challenge Johan. <laughs> it's, it's not me. It's a, it's a, it's a client. <laughs> Johan <laughs> and the company he's, it's, he's associated with, yeah? So um, what I was thinking, Brian, when you have your MVP, uh, that would be the perfect time to share the idea on Ideaspire. And so um, you'll be notified by Karen uh, of the connection with me. And we have a former questionnaire uh, that we'll send to you uh, that you just fill out with that website when you've established it. And we can then share the idea on Ideaspire and, and see uh, ho hopefully a very positive reaction to it. Thank you. No, oh, congratulations and thank you, Lynn and Brian, to let you know. Um, so I, I do some legal tech editing. I'm the legal tech editor on Ideas Buyers and some of those posts, um, you know, they get in the 1% of LinkedIn. So, you know, we'll get some good eyes hopefully on that and we'll share it. I'll certainly look out for it as well. So congratulations. Well done. Okay, Johan, over to you to announce your prize winner. Awesome. Nicole, it's you. We get to do a go, go to market strategy together. Let's have some fun. Excellent. Thanks very much. I'm looking forward to it. Awesome. That's me. Karen, you're, uh, you're muted. Oh, I certainly am. I was just laughing to myself going, you were short and sweet. Well done. <laughs> Love it. Thank you. And congratulations, Nicole. That's awesome. And over for um, our final judge to um, announce his prize winner, but also a really exciting announcement as well. So David, over to you to announce your prize and then wrap everything up. So big responsibility. Yes. So <laughs> we're just about, thank you, Karen. We're just about to launch the Thinkubator, our own um, pre-accelerator program to help creating, defining the market proposition and the market value for products and, and services. And uh, I feel that Tan's idea would, would perfectly fit into there. So I would love you to have you on board the Thinkubator, Tan, and uh, see how, what, we, what you can grow out of it. And we, we, might, we might beat uh, Johan's uh, assumption that it will take two or three years until. <laughs> I'm loving this. Let's go. Yeah. Okay. I love it. Johan, you're being challenged all over the place. Go, yay. I'm, I'm very happy to help you too. Let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. Hey, hey David, I don't think you told them what more about it and how much it's actually worth because, damn, it's a really good offer you've got there. Yes, uh, it, it is. It, it is a, a 12, a, a 10 week, 10 workshops over a four, 13 week period where we go through the design thinking process um, uh, two times. We go through first iteration of the, of the idea, then we do a market testing um, uh, with, with the prototype that you built, and uh, we do a lessons learned and go into a, a second, a second uh, iteration phase for the idea before you will be basically ready to pitch to anyone you, you need to, to progress it further. And that's what you're going to be part of. And we're excited. Whoa, thank you. <laughs> I'm not sure what to say. <laughs> but thanks yeah. so much for awesome. considering. Looking forward to it. We'll talk soon. And we, in our breakout room, the judges uh, and Karen, we were talking about how awesome it is to get out of house again uh, here in Victoria, sorry, Queensland, but now we are the ones that are laughing um, for, for now. Um, so we are after over one year doing pitch nights virtually, bringing all of Australia together on the Silicon Beach. We will have our next pitch night finally again, live here in Melbourne, 6th of May uh, at the Royal Melbourne Hotel. 
So we're looking so forward to having everyone in the room again and having a beer together or whatever beverage you like to drink and bringing the, the awesome atmosphere back to the live event that we ran before uh, COVID. So we're excited. I hope you are all too. And registration is open already. Don't wait, register, register straight away. I love it. So follow, um, you'll get all those details soon. I'll be doing some LinkedIn posting, so look out for it. But to wrap things up, thank you so much to all of you who attended. You make these nights so very special and interactive. Thank you for all the positive thoughts and feedback. Um, you know, these rooms, as I mentioned at the beginning, are some of my favourite, um, you know, evenings to, to be in this kind of company. So I really appreciate and acknowledge every one of you. Thank you to all the pitchers. Um, obviously, you are the stars of our show. So thank you so much. And we hope that it's been a valuable um, experience for you and enjoy those incredible prizes for those that won. And thank you to our amazing judges, David, and to Johan, and to Lynn. Um, so many valuable sort of questions and, and and feedback so really appreciate it we hope to have you back again sometime very soon david's now pointing at me yes david what would you like to say well, let me say one more thing because uh, what might have what i might have missed we will not stop virtual pitch nights at all we we, we love that we brought all of uh, australia together here so there will be virtual pitch nights in the future but it might be all um one one virtual one and one live one. So don't don't uh, say goodbye to us just because you're not in Melbourne. We will come back to you as well. Thank you. Uh, so uh, David, is it? Do you say it's the sixth of May? Isn't is the the meeting? Yes, sixth that's of May? correct. Yes. yes. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Karen. All good. Thank you. Well, you can all go off. Have a wonderful Easter. I hope the Easter bunny comes. I hope that you um, have a wonderful break. Enjoy and thank you. And that's me. Good night. Thank, Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Have a good Easter. You See too. you next time. Thanks, Bye, Bye bye. Bye. Thanks, Jeanette, too. <laughs> Your breakout rooms were fabulous. Thank you. <laughs> Ryan, since you've been to the breakout rooms, give us feedback or whoever. Please feel free to unmute yourself and have a chat if you want to stay here. But how, how did we go with the breakout rooms? Give us some live feedback. Oh, yeah, they're good because it gives you a chance to talk to the people who have pitched. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, it was good. I found out uh, a very, very worthwhile project that Michael is uh, developing. I don't know whether Michael.